Psalms 116. We have a psalm here of thanksgiving. I love the Lord. Way it ought to be. Plain and simple. And yet, many people, when I grew up, I love New York. I love this team. I love this actor. I love this preacher. I love this movie. I love this person. How often do you hear someone say, I love the Lord? And yet the Bible records for us, for God so loved the world, he loved us because we love him because he first loved us. God commended his love toward us while we were yet sinners. Because he has heard my voice and my supplication. Now, that's not a pious statement. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplication. It, it's a bold statement. He says, listen, I have a Lord. I have a God. That heard me. That listened. And we just got finished doing a chapter, 115, where they have ears and they hear not. I came from a religion you went talking to a priest. Well, he could hear you, but he can't answer. He can't do nothing about it. And you go in that little booth and and you tell him your sins and, you know, Hail Mary's, Our Fathers, and all that other crap. That did not get rid of my sin. I have a God that in April 1987, I knelt down. I asked God to forgive me and cleanse me of my sins. I didn't want to go to hell. God heard me. At no point did I love God before that point until after I was saved. And yet he loved me and he heard me. And since I have been saved, he has heard me countless times. And I love him for it. I don't love the Pope. He don't do nothing for me. Never will. Ain't nothing going to do nothing. I don't love the president because he, he ain't going to do nothing for me. I don't love the Democrats. He's not going to do nothing for me. And yet, not only have I have been invited to heaven through the blood of Jesus Christ, but I am told by the scriptures, by the same Jesus, he's building a mansion for me. The White House? Forget about the White House. I got a mansion built by God. You take the White House. I'll take the mansion. And they're perverted Bibles, and we left the church because the mansion's been changed. Don't you change my mansion. We have a God that hears. We have a God that, that answers our prayers. We have a God that cares for us. And we ought to be thanksgiving to him. Because he has incli incl inclined his ear unto me. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. So... Having a God that listens, having a God that has an ear that is open, I love him, and I'm going to call upon him every day while I'm living. Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock. It is God's good pleasure. The almighty, heavenly creator wants us to talk to him. Paul said, pray without ceasing. And yet we, we receive that because we ask not, James tells us. The sorrows of death compass me. You know, that must have been a miserable time in the Old Testament. You know, some people, you know, you know we're under a law and that... I don't care how right you were in the Old Testament. I don't care if you brought that proper lamb and you gave a tithe 
and some to make sure. I don't care if you brought the goat. I don't care if you showed up three times a year. You still did not have the satisfaction and you did not have the insurance that I have the insurance on this side of Calvary. I'm going to heaven. I know it. David, countless times in Psalms, say, Lord, take not thy spirit from me. That meant you gone to hell. When I got God's Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ, he came and abided with me. I'll never leave thee or forsake thee. That's not so in the Old Testament. I mean, there's quite a question of King Saul. There's quite a question with Samson. Yet King Saul is not mentioned in Hebrews. King Saul is, is not mentioned like Samson's mentioned in Hebrews. Joab is not listed amongst the mighty men of David only as he was the brother of so and so. Joab murdered two men. And the law stated that was it. Don't bring anything. And only by the sure mercies of David. And yet today I can murder a man. Not that I'm going, but I can murder a man today and I can plead the blood of Jesus Christ and take the chastisement, but I don't lose my soul. I'll lose reward. I'll lose an inheritance. But I don't lose my eternal possession in heaven. So when he says the sorrows of death compass me, it could be very, you know, I don't want to die. And yet the Christian has the assurance to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Paul says, I'm in the straight. Betwixt two, having the desire to be, to be absent and be with Christ, which is far better. I have desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. So do I. It says in verse 15, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. As a born-again Bible-believing Christian, I go to glory when I die, or rapture. The sorrows of death comfort me, and the pains of hell get upon me. This is a man who says, I love the Lord, but there's that, there's hell. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to hell either. And I settled it in April 1987. And I know I've been saying April 21st, but when I looked at the calendar, it was April 27th. I made an error. It's the 27th. I, did, I got saved because I did not want to go to hell. And I was shown through the Bible on how not to go to hell. This man, I don't want to die and I don't want to go to hell. I found trouble and sorrow. That's life. Life is good. Any idiot says that hasn't really lived life to the fullest yet. That guy's had a pampered glove. Or that's just a saying to put on the back of a tire cover so you can make money. Life ain't good without Jesus. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. I didn't want to die in hell and I called on the name of the Lord. I didn't go to a He says, I didn't go to a priest. And they were to go to the Levites. He said, I went right to the Lord. I didn't call on Mary. I know there was no Mary, but he didn't call on Mary. There was the Queen of Heaven in Jeremiah. I didn't go to Esther. I didn't go to Baal. I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, beseech thee, deliver my soul. 
So evidently the psalmist in the Old Testament has recorded a sin. And not naming the sin, but Lord, I, this sin is going to bring death. <coughs> this sin is going to bring hell. I call upon you. And people throughout ages, as far as Cain, goes to religion. Cain brought the fruit of his hands and then murdered the one that was right with the blood. Or people just choose to ignore. It's not real. That's a shame. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. What would he be gracious and merciful about? He must have settled in this guy about death and hell and his sin. I can only assume it's not told when it was written or, or who wrote it. But if it's in the time of the law, I can only assume he's walked away from the tabernacle or temple. Having the priest slain the blood on the brazen altar. Or even the high priest has gone in the second time into the holies of holy. At the day of atonement. And yet their conscience. But the blood was applied. Of the animals. And the, the, the blood of the bulls and the goats. Cannot take away the sin. And an Old Testament saint died. And went to Abraham's bosom. Waiting for the Messiah. The Redeemer. The one who would be the remission. Of, of their sin. And the law was so strict. Am I right with God or am I not right with God? The Lord preserveth the simple. Preserves the key book. Preserved for the Old Testament was they died and they went to Abraham's bosom. And preserved and slept like Samuel said he was. Until Jesus Christ arose from the dead. They didn't rot. Their bodies rotted but their souls didn't rot. They didn't burn in hell like the rich man. When God preserves. <coughs> he keeps up. And today, for this, those during the church day, they're signed, sealed, and delivered. In the tribulation period that is to come, you can get saved. And you can lose it. Now, I'll tell you what the devil is going to do. I know what he's going to do. You see, what he does today is he tells a Christian, you can lose it. And Christians fret. Am I going to lose it? Am I going to lose it? No, you're not. I'll tell you what he's going to do in the tribulation period, most likely. You're going to lose your soul, and he's going to make you think, ah, that's okay. I, I, once saved, always saved. Not in the tribulation period. Not under the law and works and faith. I was brought low. Humble. And he, God, helped me. He gives God the credit. And this coronavirus, oh, it's the president, it's the scientist, it's the medical doctor. We want to we want to thank the first responders and the people on the front line. What about God? Oh, God had nothing to do with it. It was us, great us. That's not the answer. Return unto thy rest, O my soul. And Hebrews speaks much about that rest. And the rest for the Jewish person, if this man is Jewish, is the land grant. And 
I'm going to assume that right if he's under the law and if there's a tabernacle or the temple, he has gone to the temple and he's brought his animal and has been slain at the brazen altar, if not the day of atonement. And he's walking home saying, I got the joy, joy down in my soul that that animal died for me. My sins have been covered. I still got the conscience. And I'm going back home to the land that God has promised Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob if he's Jewish. I would see why he's not. I'm going to go home. I'm going to rest with my family. And the next time I'm the period three, the three times of the year. And I'm going to say, you know, oh, wait a minute. I broke that, that law. I got to bring another sacrifice. But now, coming home from the tabernacle, coming home from the temple, whatever the period is, I've done something that got God right. I'm going to the land. That's the promise of the Jews. And he does not have the promise when he dies to go to glory. I'm not sure, you know, what the Jews knew that there was a place of the dead, Shiloh. Samuel spoke about, I'm sleeping. And they also knew a place of hell, verse 3. There's a place of torment and torture. And there's a place of rest, the land and Abraham's bosom. David died and he slept with his fathers. Solomon died and he slept with his fathers. Fathers would be Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. My soul, for the Lord has dealt bountifully with thee. For the Lord has dwelt bountifully with thee. That's me. God has count your many blessings. Any testament. Any period of a, of a uh, testament. Old law. Before the law. After the law. Even the tribulation period in the millennium. Listen, God provides more than the three things we need for life. Air, water, and food. For some, he provides clothing and, and transportation, uh, housing, money. And whatever your life is, wherever you are in the world living, and even it's a third world country, and you're just poor and probably stricken, God has dealt bountifully. And more so if you're saved and born again as God has given you eternal life that lasts forever. A mansion, New Jerusalem, in the presence of the Holy Almighty Creator God with Jesus Christ. Forever. Now that's bountiful. Don't give that nonsense amazing grace when we've been there for 10,000 years. Man, remind me if the Lord ever gives me a church to take that last line and wipe it out. Actually, I was thinking the other night. If the Lord gave me a church, we have hymnals. I'm going to get the, the one that has all, I think there's five, five or six stanzas of Amazing Grace. I'm going to take out that, that we've been there for a thousand. I don't sing that stanza no more. That stanza came from uh, a movie, Uncle Tom's Cabin. I don't quote movies. I quote the Bible. For thou hast delivered my soul from death. Well, look what happened in verse 3. He has done something to uh, please God that God said, hey, don't worry about death. It's covered. And if it's the Old Testament, it's an animal sacrifice, it's an animal's blood, it's covered. You're not going to go to heaven. You're going to go to Abraham's bosom. But when my son suffers and dies, according to the scriptures, and buried, and arises again three days and three nights, according to the scriptures, and the graves were open, and the Old Testament saints came out. So between verses 3 and 8, 
he has done something according to what time period he's in. God said, okay. And God said in his heart, for thou, God, has delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling into hell. Look what he said in verse 3. The sorrows of death. There's the tears. Compass me. The pains of hell. Yet hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Thou hast delivered my soul from death. My eyes from tears. He's been crying. And my feet from falling. This guy has obeyed, I would assume, the law. But that didn't give you security. The law did not give you security. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. As long as I'm living, I'm going to walk for the Lord. I'm going to obey those laws. He says it's impossible. That rich one you who came up to Jesus, and Jesus said, Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt honor thy parents, thou shalt keep the Sabbath, blah, blah, blah. That man said, Lord, from my youth up, and he did not get rebuked by Jesus. Now, the only law he broke was coveting. Jesus said, all you have to sell what you have and come follow me. He coveted his money. That's the law he broke. Everything else. Is it possible? Job. There is no law for Job. And Job, you look at what Job said. In his self-righteousness, I did not look upon a man. And if anybody, if I if I did not take, if my crops, if I violated my crops, that's it. There was two righteous men. And they were still dying. And still without God, would have no life. I believe. There's that belief. You've got to have belief. Therefore have I spoken. I just testified. I was greatly afflicted. Troubled problems. That hell and death. And sorrows and trouble. I said in my haste. I said very rashly. All men are liars. I don't know what that has to do with anything. But it, that's a true statement. All men have lied sometime in their life. That when, when that baby's in the crib and it's crying in the middle of the night and it's not hungry and it doesn't need to be changed, he's lying to you. Give me attention. I need attention. No, you know, you need to go back to bed. Your diaper's nice and dry and you, your tummy's nice and full. What on earth are you crying for? Well, I'm a liar. I mean, had it not been for Genesis 3, the baby would sleep through the night. Because they wouldn't be thinking of themselves. It always amazes me when I was a child and watching my children grow up. They'd be doing things that hurt themselves. No, no problem. But as soon as they hurt themselves and there's an adult in the room, they oh, ah! You faker. I've done it. Calls attention to yourself. You're lying. Lying, lying, your pants is on fire. That's what we used to say. What shall I render unto the Lord? Ooh. Work. We're in the law. What animal do I bring to God? Now today we bring the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We bring the gospel. For all his benefits toward me. <coughs> Excuse me. And you thought benefits came from your employer. You know what benefits God takes care of you? He gives you a good check. He gives you health. Oh, I got bad health. It could be worse. It could be worse. You know what a benefit is? It's much better than what it should be. That's what a benefit is. I will take the cup of salvation. 
What did Jesus say about that cup at the, at the Lord's Supper? Here, take this cup and drink of it. It's the blood of the New Testament. Isn't that what he said? It's not death. The blood. John R. Rice had it wrong. I will call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's prophecy. That's the Lord's Supper and calling on the name of Jesus for salvation. There's no other name given amongst men whereby you must be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What must you do to be saved? I must believe on the blood of Jesus Christ. What was that cup that the Lord suffered? I, I take part when we do the Lord's Supper. It's, a, it's great, Jews. It's the show that Jesus Christ's blood was shed for me. What man brought a cup for salvation? To, to the, he didn't bring a cup and say, oh, fill it up with that animal's blood and I'll drink. That's not what he did. That's cannibalism. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Look at verse 18. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of verily, verily. Did you say I do? You better do. Unto death do us part. You better do unto death do your part till it's done. Did you make a foxhole confession to God? God, you get me out of this war. Get me a lot. Oh, and fill in the blanks. Lord, if I, if I get this job or if I can keep this job or you get me out of this trouble, I'll, you better. I think Solomon says better to not vow than vow a vow. And it's a sin to vow a vow and not pay that vow. Precious, precious. In the sight of the Lord, God's seen is the death of his saints. That's, that's remarkable for an Old Testament statement. Because when a saint died in the Old Testament, he didn't go before God. He went to Abraham's bosom. So you know where the eyes of the God are? They're down there in paradise, Abraham's bosom, and down in hell. And look at that, saint. They're Old Testament saints, they're New Testament saints. Death of a saint. A man who is a woman who's living dies. A saint is someone who's alive and dead. O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant. Look at that, verily, verily. And the son of thy handmaid. His mother was proper before the Lord. His mother did right. Like Timothy's mother and grandmother. Had, thou hast loosed my bonds. I don't know if he was born in slavery, born in... I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving that was prescribed by the law. You can go back and read that. I will call upon the name of the Lord again. Verse 13. Call upon the name of the Lord. Verse 4. Call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows again unto the Lord, now in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house. Okay, there's the temple. Or the tabernacle. And probably courts, plural, it would be Solomon's temple. Because Moses' uh, tabernacle had one court. In the midst of the old Jerusalem. Okay, now it's in Jerusalem. It's got court. Probably the temple of Solomon. So it wouldn't be David. It would be after the building of Te Solomon's temple. Praise ye the Lord. And we'll do Psalms 117. 
Oh, praise ye the Lord. Picks up right from Psalm 116. All ye nations. Is America praising the Lord? Absolutely correctly not. Is England praising the Lord? Absolutely correctly not. Is China praising the Lord? Absolutely correctly not. Is Russia praising the Lord? Absolutely correctly not. So how do you expect God to bless America? How do you expect God to send a revival? How can you be so foolish? You want God to send a revival when the nations are not praising Him. So you want a holy and righteous God to bring a holy and righteous revival. It's not going to happen. Listen, when the revivals came to America, the Great Awakening, one and two, bars were shut down. The theaters were shut down. You know what they do in, in 2000? Do you know that there has been church meetings at Hooters? You know where Hooters is? Do you know that there's been church meetings at pubs? That they'll have a church meeting and have a glass of beer? Do you know the churches go out on movie night? Oh, it's a family PG or G movie. But they go out to the theater. They don't close the theaters. They give money to the theaters. You know, I've been... Churches go to bowling alleys. Where every bowling alley has a bar. And a skating ring I've been with a church where there's a bar. But we don't take, but it's there. You don't shut down the bars. You don't shut down the theaters. You bring your congregation to them. But give us a revival. No! <laughs> You old fool. I'm rich, we're great, everything's great. Oh, wonderful, guys, and you're miserable, naked. Bleah. Excuse me. You guys want to come out? Come on now. Praise him. Praise him, praise him. All ye people. I guess people who are not in nation. All the nations, praise the Lord. And all the people, you know, in case there's any people out there who don't have a nation, there probably are. For his mercy, God's mercy, we read about that in chapter 6, 116, and kindness, that was verse 116, verse 5, after he's done what God's told him to do at the tabernacle, and he's like, I have no more fear of death, I have no more fear of hell. It's gracious and merciful to God and thanking God that, hey, I'm not going to hell. People may tell me to go to hell, but I ain't going. And when I leave this body with death or rapture, I'm going to be with the Lord. Kindness to a great towards us. And the truth of the Lord, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, endureth forever. So you're not going to kill Jesus every mass. Again, praise ye the Lord. And that concludes two chapters to man.